Hello everyone. Several times in the past I've been asked to talk about grounding. But in order to talk about grounding we have to understand that we're talking about a multi-dimensional occurrence from a third dimensional perspective using third dimensional language. Your consciousness is much like a stream. And as your consciousness streams through the multiple dimensions, the parts of your consciousness that are focused into one dimension or another are called aspects. That's why, if you meet people who go out of body often, you might hear something like, my 10th dimensional aspect attended someone who is out of body during a vehicle crash last night. To ground yourself means to fully connect and phase with the perspective of your physical dimensional aspect. Your consciousness is not as much a finite clump of energy as it is an infinite current of energy. For this reason, it is easily compared to electricity. Removing the excess electric charge from an object is called grounding. Removing the excess emotional charge that is the result of getting lost in the non-physical dimensions of thought is also called grounding. When we pull our focus back to our physical dimensional aspect, we entrain with the frequency of Earth itself. We allow energy to move through our root chakra. We allow ourselves to be fully present here with our physical bodies and physically incarnated perspectives. For this reason, though, grounding is particularly difficult for people who have suffered from any kind of abuse, or sexual abuse especially, people who feel unsafe in their physical bodies. Anyone who feels traumatized will find it more safe to be out of their body, exploring other realms and dimensions in this universe. To be fully phased might have been dangerous, but there's a problem when people begin to become safe. That is, that when we become safe, it's no longer beneficial for us to spend our time outside of body. That actually interferes with our day-to-day -day life. So if you've ever experienced some kind of event which makes it so that you feel unsafe in your physical body, grounding is actually very good for you. When we have suffered in the past, we tend to frequently go back to the past in our minds. Grounding pulls us out of those traumatic memories and into the stability and safety of the present moment. Grounding is the perfect remedy for anyone who is feeling stressed, triggered, regressed, rushed, overworked, confused, overwhelmed, panicked, angry, clumsy, or drained. I want to provide you with some tips which will help you to ground because this video is all about how to ground yourself. Tip number one is walk barefoot on the earth. The earth maintains a negative electrical potential on its surface. When you are in direct contact with the ground, walking, sitting, or laying down on the earth's surface, the earth's electrons are conducted to your body, bringing it to the same electrical potential as the earth itself. In other words, when you are in contact with the earth, its tranquil energy naturally transfers to any conductive object, whether it's a metal rod, a tree, a plant, or an animal, or a human, and they become grounded. Throughout history, humans have walked barefoot on the ground, which naturally discharges and prevents the buildup of electrical stress. Your immune system functions optimally when your body has an adequate supply of electrons, which are easily and naturally obtained by barefoot contact with the earth. Laying on the ground also helps. Doing squats with your palms on the ground, or touching your forehead to the ground, also works. Obviously, gardening is a very grounding activity as well. The second tip is to bring your attention to the present moment, fully to the now. One of the best ways to do this is to perform a body scan. You take a deep breath, sitting in a comfortable position, and you begin to internally scan your full body starting at your toes. What do your toes feel like? Are there any sensations you can perceive? Do they feel hot? Are they tingly? Do they feel heavy? Just notice what you see and perceive there, and move your way up through the legs, 
up through the pelvis, all the way up your spine and your torso, up through your head, down through your arms. You're just observing the way that your body feels in this moment. You want to be where you are physically. So you may want to walk around the room and pick up things and just notice how it feels to touch those things. You can run cold water over your hands. You can notice not only what's going on in your body, but what's going on in your environment. It may help even to list things. So if I was to do it right here in this moment, I would say, pool cues hanging on the wall, the sound of the refrigerator, the feeling of the cold air against my skin. Any kind of attention to the present moment is going to ground you in your body right here and now. Eat root vegetables. Anything that grows under the surface of the earth will help you connect with earth's energies because in order for that vegetable to grow inside the earth, it has to have entrained with earth's energy more so than other things. Some examples of grounding foods are potatoes, turnips, carrots, beets, sweet potatoes, and radishes. Some people like to argue that eating meat is very grounding. This is not actually the case. Eating meat decreases your frequency. Grounding your frequency and decreasing your frequency are not the same thing. Utilize grounding stones. As I said in my video on crystals, anytime you share the space with something, an object, a crystal, anything, you have to entrain to match the frequency of that object, or the other way around. But when it comes to a rock or a mineral, they hold such a solid vibration that it's much less likely that they're going to match your vibration, much more likely that you're going to raise your frequency to match theirs. So keep grounding stones with you. You can wear them as jewelry or keep them in your pocket. Some examples of grounding stones are hematite, smoky quartz, obsidian, red coral, onyx, black tourmaline, ruby, garnet, pyrite, tiger iron, and black opal. Utilize grounding scents. A scent, just like a stone or anything else, is a vibration. When you have a scent around you, you are forced to entrain with that energy or move out of that space. So you can use this to your advantage. I think the best way to use scents when it comes to grounding is to use essential oils. And everyone has their own perspective about what essential oil is the best for grounding. But here is my favorite essential oils for grounding. Cedar, vetiver, benzoin, myrrh, sandalwood, cypress, oak moss, patchouli oil, rosewood, chamomile, and ylang ylang. You can also use lavender, which is good at convincing the consciousness to relax into the physical. You can use these oils alone, or you can combine them. One of the best ways to do this is to get a spray bottle, but make sure the spray bottle isn't plastic. It has to be glass or metal. You want to fill it with spring water, not tap water, because tap water can actually dilute and corrupt the essential oils. So once you've filled up this spray bottle with water, you want to drop a few drops of each essential oil in there. And then you want to potentially put a grounding stone in with it. And you can shake it up really nice and then spray it on yourself throughout the day. You can use color to ground yourself as well. Color is a very powerful vibration. So you can wear that color, or you can visualize filling your body up with a color. The color that's used for grounding the most is red, because red is associated with the root chakra, which is the chakra which deals with grounding. You can also use browns or blacks. All of these colors are grounding colors. Use sound to stimulate your root chakra. Certain crystal bowls, metal bowls, and alchemy bowls have been designed so that the sound they emit stimulates and balances your root chakra. This grounds you. Binaural rhythms also do this. You can find binaural beats and rhythms made specifically for the root chakra and for grounding for free on YouTube, but you can also purchase them and listen to them in your car or when you go to sleep at night. In my opinion, the best way to use sound when it comes to grounding is to tone. When you're toning, you're using your own voice to stimulate areas of your body, and you can use your own voice to stimulate your root chakra.
The way you want to do this is to hum a tone. Start high and then go low. The root chakra vibrates at a very low frequency. And you want to pay attention to the sensation you feel in your body relative to that tone. So if you start high, you might feel the vibration somewhere here in your chest or here in your stomach. As you go low, you'll feel that vibrating sensation move down. You want to move that sensation down between your legs or even at the base of your tailbone and hold it there. <coughs> so for me, the tone, if I was going to do this, I would start like high like this, and then I would watch it go down like so. That final note is my root chakra note for my body in terms of toning. So that's the note I want to hit if I want to stimulate my root chakra. Spend time around grounded individuals. People are the same as colors or scents or stones. They hold their own vibration. Some people are more grounded than other people. And sometimes a person is more grounded on a day than another person. So if someone's particularly ungrounded, being around someone who is grounded can be very beneficial, especially if they have close physical contact. One of the best ways to do this is to hold the palms of their hands. Another way to do this is to have the person who's more grounded walk up behind the person who is ungrounded and put their palm underneath the occipital ridge of the person's head. And then to move their hands down to the back top of the hips and to keep their hands there for the count of eight. Do grounding meditations and visualizations. There are many of these grounding visualizations and meditations available. So if you enjoy guided meditations, do a search for grounding meditations and grounding visualizations and give them a try until you find one that works for you. My personal favorite is to visualize myself as a tree. To begin this particular visualization, I begin by raising my hands on the in-breath and bringing them down on the out-breath four times. So it looked like this. So I'm doing that four times. After I'm done with that, I'm visualizing my energy sinking down into the center of the earth. I'm visualizing myself becoming a tree. As my energy goes down, it goes far enough that it hooks itself into the center of the earth. And then I pull that energy back up through my body. I then visualize that I have roots growing from my feet that are working its way into the center of the earth and pulling that energy up through the totality of my body. I maintain the in-breath and the out-breath in order to pull in earth energy and breathe out whatever blockages I have in my body. This is a very grounding visualization. Take a salt bath. I'm not talking normal table salt. That's toxic. The salt I am talking about is sea salt, solar salt, sulfur salt, Hawaiian salt, or Himalayan salt. Those are just some examples. It's no mistake that salt is notorious for healing the physical body. It holds one of the most purifying vibrations around. This is why we use it to neutralize energy in healing crystals. Immerse your body for at least 20 minutes. Add one to two cups of high quality salt to your bathtub while you're running the water. And just like you did with the essential oil mister bottle, go ahead and add your favorite grounding stones to the bath as well. Maintain and strengthen your body. We spiritual types tend to be so focused into the spirit and into the mind that we forget that the body is a very necessary part of our spiritual practice. So taking the time to exercise and to eat healthy foods is focusing on your body. That will help you to ground yourself here in the third dimension, in the physical dimension. The ability to consciously ground yourself is a very important tool to have when it comes to spiritual practice. Because the physical master is not only the person who can use his consciousness to transcend the physical dimension, but it is also the person who is able to fully engage their consciousness with the physical dimension. So go ahead and try these tips, and have a good week.